Beekeeping is really all about problem solving. And today I want to help you to discover, and all this week I want to make videos to help you discover how to solve immediate problems when you look at the hive. This is going to be a simple way for you to expand your beekeeping skills and start mastering the ability to read frames, to read your bees, see problems, and immediately know what the solution is. Isn't that exciting? Wouldn't it be cool to know that? I know some of you are like, oh, David, just tell me. Okay, let's get right into it. Let me first start by saying the first thing you're going to do when you inspect your hive, you're going to have a plan of what to look for. You're going to look for the queen or evidence that she's there by discovering her eggs in cells. And so what you're looking for, as you see here, is an egg sticking straight up in a cell. This means the queen is present. She laid that egg within the last 24 hours. And so, whew, all right, we have a laying queen. Now, if we see multiple eggs like this in a cell, we simply know we don't have a queen and we have laying workers. Those are female workers that normally are suppressed by the pheromones from the queen and the brood from not laying eggs. But now, since there's no brood and there's no queen expressing those pheromones, the, the workers, all the workers, sometimes many of them, are able then to lay eggs. And they can't really go all the way down in the cell all the time, so you'll see eggs on the side of a wall. You'll see multiple eggs, six or eight eggs in the base of a cell, if the, if the comb is short enough for them to reach it. And this means that they're unfertilized eggs. It means you haven't had a queen for two or three weeks, and now the laying workers uh, are taking over and laying these unfertilized eggs. They're going to become drone. So those are two simple things to look for when it comes to egg laying. Right? Write these down. Take notes, okay? Look for eggs straight up in the cell. That's a good laying queen all as well. Number two, you want to look for the eggs that might be multiple eggs in one cell. That potentially could be a laying worker. Caveat. Take notes. If you have a new queen, and she's new to the block. She's new in the neighborhood. She hasn't been in your hive very long. Guess what? She can lay more than one egg in a cell. She's just kind of getting her rhythm. She's getting used to laying. So maybe for the first two weeks, it's possible you could see multiple eggs in a cell. But the difference is, number one, you could see your queen if you look carefully and try to find her, you'll see her. You won't see her if, if it's a laying workers that are laying those eggs. And number two, um, usually you'll only see one or two at the most eggs in a cell for a new queen just getting started laying. Whereas on laying workers, you see a lot of eggs in a cell. Step number two, you're going to evaluate the larvae. The eggs become larvae on day three. They go from an egg to a larvae. And a larvae, for those of you that aren't familiar with maybe what that looks like, some people call it a grub, a worm, but it's a very white larvae curled, sometimes slightly curled, in the base of the cells in the brood area. Take a look at the image here. You can see what larvae looks like. They should always have an abundance of royal jelly. You're learning so much. This is so good. So you're looking at a hive, you see larvae, and they're usually pretty close to where you saw the eggs too because they're just three days older than that egg is. They're developed a little bit longer, and so you look for that larvae and you determine, oh good, the larvae looks good, it's pearly white, and it has a significant amount of royal jelly. It's, some people call it milk brood, M-I-L-K, milk brood. It means that there's royal jelly that the larvae is consuming. The royal jelly is produced by the mandibular glands of workers that are between the ages of six to 12 days old. They produce the royal jelly and drop it into the cells of this developing larvae, and that's what they consume while they're developing. So you're looking for eggs, and then you want to look for larvae, but here's a really important part of the brood that you're evaluating as well. Get this, we're actually looking for cat brood. Now, depending on how old your hive is, if it's a brand new hive and the queen just started laying, you're not going to see cat brood, you're going to see eggs and maybe larvae. But after about day seven, eight, or nine, they're going to start capping over the larvae, and the larvae is going to go into the pupation stage of brood development. As the larvae matures and gets ready to go into the pupa stage, the bees will cap it off. The, the pupae begins to build a cocoon in those cells, 
and pupates into an adult bee. That capping on top, on top of the pupa is sort of like more velvety than you would see on the honeycomb. Um, waxed over or capped over honey is more waxy. It has a wetter look. And so you can kind of tell the difference between what brood looks like capped over and what honey looks like capped over by the surface of the comb covering it. And if you're really not sure, you can always take a little toothpick, tear one open. You'll either see two purpleized staring at you or you'll see honey oozing out of a cell. So this is a brood. We have eggs. We talked about larvae swimming in rural jelly. And then we now we're talking about the capped over pupation period of the bees developing into uh, adult bees. So after 21 days, that's when that little bee that's in that cell is going to emerge out of her cell. She's a female worker bee and she will emerge on day 21. So you have to determine in your mind and brain, you have to take notes what I'm saying here when you do an inspection. What are we looking for? Do you want to find your queen? Maybe. You don't have to. But you do have to look for eggs. That's evidence that she's doing a good job laying eggs for you. Single leg sticking straight up. That means that she was there today, last 24 hours. If you look in your hive and you don't see any eggs and you only see larvae that are very old, and that uh, older larvae, like maybe day five or six, they're shaped like a C. And as they get the, you know, day one, they're like this, two, three, four, five, they start closing the C. So if you see um, the larvae that's already curled in the base of the cell like this, it means your queen hasn't laid anything younger than that if you don't see anything younger. So now you know you lost your queen about five or six days ago. See how easy that is to diagnose? The age of the youngest larvae, based on how curved it is, tells you how long ago that egg was laid. And so this is just giving you the data and the knowledge to assess your colony. Now you evaluate the brood. Stay with me, this is cool. You just simply look at brood and how capped over it is, meaning does it have a good brood pattern? Are there any cells that are kind of open? And if they're open, not, not part of the capped brood, it means the queen didn't lay an egg in there, possibly or something was wrong with that cell, so she skipped it. But in this case, in this uh, picture, you can see that we can do a brood uh, viability test where we actually take a square of 100 cells and uh, minus the ones that aren't capped, and that gives us a percentage of brood viability. And we're looking for something in the mid to high 80s and up that shows us we have a good laying queen. Capped over brood, you know what it looks like. You pull up a frame, just fully capped over. It is amazing when you see a whole frame, very few misses. Now, if you look at another frame, and it's pretty, what we call scattered brood or shoddy brood, it's not, it's not really sealed over smoothly all across. And uh, we might think, uh-oh, something's wrong with my queen. Either she's just kind of getting started, uh, they're not being fed well, but we have spotty brood, a spotty brood pattern. This is what you need to be concerned about. As a beekeeper, you want to master up. You want to have a mastery level of beekeeping skill so that when you open a hive, you don't have to panic when you, when you see something that's wrong. When, now you have a little bit more knowledge and information to look at something and know what's going on. You're looking for an egg sticking straight up. You're looking for larvae that are little white larvae in the base of cells that are starting to be curled after they become the first day larvae and they curl over till about day six, seven, and eight. And then they become capped over sealed pupae that develop all the way up to day 21. And you evaluate your capped over uh, pupae, your capped over brood on how, uh, how thoroughly it's capped over. So there's no uh, open cells. If there's a lot of open cells, it means there's a queen problem or the hive isn't being fed good. Now, I've got to go into this in more detail tomorrow when I come back and we'll talk more about this. So look at this video, go over it several times. It's a starting place for many of you. It's familiar perhaps to a lot of you and a good refresher. And maybe it clarifies what some of you have already seen this year as a beekeeper and you just didn't know how to think about it or what to do about it. So we are establishing a foundation of what we're supposed to be looking at during an inspection. And all week, I'm going to tell you what to do if. 
That's going to be important. Beekeepers need to know what to do if something goes wrong. One of the things that goes wrong and frustrates beekeepers to no end is when the bees make wonky comb. That's right, wonky comb. So frustrating because it not only messes up the frame that the wonky comb is on, usually messes up the frames beside the wonky comb. If you want more information on what to do to avoid wonky comb so you don't have to mess with it, it can just be so frustrating, I made a video right here and you can watch this on how to avoid wonky comb. See you tomorrow.